do share us around. We do like to be shared around. I've seen accounts with 11,000 followers getting 100 story views. How can that be? Don't make Instagram's job easier when it comes to looking for spam accounts by doing that. I don't think that they get half the amount of clients that you think that they do from the tactics that they're actually telling you to do. In this video, I'm going to fidget like this all the time. In this video, um, we are going to talk about the three things that are killing your Instagram account. Hey guys, we're Dan and Mike from Business and Banter. Business. I should probably say it properly. I feel like I rushed through that. Business. Business, business, business. and Banter. And we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way we can. Did it again, you see? It kind of just rolls off the tongue quite quickly. But anyway, we're going to talk today about Instagram accounts. And people always say to us, oh yeah, but you guys have got shit Instagram accounts. So why should we listen to you? Well, I think you're wrong because it's super engaged, our Instagram accounts. Um, but no, in all seriousness, we haven't gone viral. We haven't got huge amounts of, of followers, but we do have a seven-figure business. So we must be doing something right. Um, so Mike, three things that are killing people's Instagram accounts. So what we think are, again, like this is all just conjecture, it's all just theory based on it's our all clients. Up. doesn't exist. Our coaches, but everyone, we're not else, even here. everyone else is making up the revenue. This we're is, just making up our thoughts on Instagram. So, you know, we're better than most. <laughs> this is AI. Uh, but bef before we start, I've got to, I've got to, it'd be remiss of me to not CTA. So if you like this video and you're not in the members group, why just the hell not? Get in it. Get God in. Say, come, come on, come on, come all, come you on, know. Come on. Melt um, pot, please. So, so the members group, what is it? Who are you? Too many questions. Go and check it out. There's a link below. All the information's on that. 99 quid is all you need to know for probably the highest amount of value that is out there for online fitness businesses. Simple. Correct. There you go. At last. Simple as that. So yeah, with the Instagram account. So obviously, like, there's been a huge uh, trend over the last, one, I say, 12 to 24 months of business mentors telling their clients to cold DM people, follow people and hope they follow back and find people in your niche and all this sort of shit. And what we're finding is that people are coming to us then and going, oh, I didn't really work and I need your guys' help. And I'm like, okay, cool. Let's have a look at stuff. Oh, your account is actually pretty much dead and yeah. there's no one engaging with it. You might have 2,000 followers, but you get 100 people watch your stories. You get no one like your post, no one save your post, no one in your DMs talking to you on a normal basis. And it's because people are killing your Instagram account and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You're following the advice of other people, but they don't know any better and they don't actually care either. And one of the things that we do is we help online coaches with their organic content get organic leads in, not hiring a VA, not relying on you following hundreds of people each day and sending them a cold DM. It takes a little bit of time, obviously, but there's a reason that we do it. It's because it leads to longevity. It leads to a business that stands the test of time. And it leads to a business and an Instagram account, especially that is highly engaged, that is full of people that are ready to buy from you at some point in the future. We said three points, but I've actually thought of a fourth one that I'm going to put at the end. So bonus. Stick Hang around. around to the end. Hang around that. to the end. Now, you will get told to do these these tactics. So I'm just going to preface. Is it preface or preface? Preface. Yeah. preface. preface. Pref How do you knows. pronounce that? Preface. preface. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to preface this video with saying the reason that people are telling you to do this is that it can potentially bring in a couple of clients in the first couple of months that you start doing it. And it, it will kill your account of it, like after that because it's what we're seeing. We're seeing people coming in from other other mentors with a healthy following, three, four, five thousand, hundred story views, can't get a sign up full of the money because they've done these things. So stick around. But the reason why they're telling you that, and you might go, but they've also got a big business. They've also got a seven figure business, whatever. So maybe I should trust them. I would argue, have a look where all of their business comes from. I reckon it's predominantly from ads. Mm -hmm. That's where I think it comes from. And I'm pretty convicted in that. They'll get the majority, if not all, of their leads from ads, from paid. So you might go, oh, maybe I'll try paid. Paid will be much easier for mentors than it will be for a fat loss coach. Why? Online coaches are easier to target. The pain points are probably stronger because it's somebody's livelihood, their bills are needing to be paid and so on, than just lose another six pounds something like that right so the, the pain points are stronger um there's less competition so there's less of us than there are online coaches um and businesses or b2b stuff are more likely to pay for investment from somebody that they've come across on social media because i could say here's how we made a nine figure business come and learn our secret methods some coaches are going to be intrigued by that right that's an easier sell over a facebook ad than um 
coaching, which is essentially a, uh, or fat loss coaching, which is essentially a personal relationship business where somebody's got to trust you, send pictures of themselves in their pants, want to talk to you on a week to week basis because to, to help them with the, the two stone that they're too scared to show anybody, right? They could pick you or the next person or the next person or the next person or the hundreds or thousands of other coaches out there. So that does need to be a bit more personal and it's less likely to work through ads. So what I will say is, is that when you're looking at other mentors, go, oh, they've done quite well though. So maybe, you know, some of these things do work. I don't think that they get half the amount of clients that you think that they do from the tactics that they're actually telling you to do. That was the, was that the bonus, what was that one? That wasn't the bonus one, was it? It weren't the bonus one. No. The bonus one's going to be at the bonus end. This one's even better. So, one thing I would say about the, the cold DMs and stuff is that I think it would be foolish of us to assume. So that's assume, number one, isn't it? That's number one. That's yeah. number one, cold DMs. I just want to add to that with the, with the Instagram thing is that I think it would be foolish of us to assume that Instagram and the algorithm that it uses is not based on DMs as well as your feed posts and story posts, right? What we're noticing from looking at people's stories and their DMs and stuff is that we know on Instagram that DMs is one of the most used features and Instagram have said that, they've come out and said it themselves, right? So there will be part of the algorithm that will be based on your DMs and based on the activity that goes on there. I'm convinced, I don't know this, right? But this is my theory. I'm convinced that Instagram will look at in versus out of DMs and it will look at how many are going out, how many are coming in organically, naturally. The conversations between those two things, they will determine engagement of your account. I'm almost convinced of it, which is why all these copywriters and video editors end up in our request folder because they're sending out so many, but they're getting so little back. So Instagram recognizes that and goes, well, this is going to be someone who we're going to put in request because they don't actually have an engaged account. And I've seen it with coaches. I had a, I had a client once, she reached out to me and it was in my hidden requests and it was just a normal message about wanting my help, but it was in my hidden request. And my assumption of that is that because she was sending out so many cold DMs, got on a call, she's now my client of mine, speaking to her, yeah, she was told to send hundreds a day. Okay. She was getting very little back. She had followed seven and a half thousand people and she had about 4,000 followers. Instagram knows what you're fucking doing. They're not stupid. You can't outsmart Instagram. It's not going to happen. I'm convinced from what I've seen of people's Instagram story views and all this sort of stuff, what we try and do is get people to, to message you first, then you can message them back. I believe that Instagram looks at that as a positive engagement on your account and will look upon that favorably. Think about your account and think about how often you're sending outbound, whether it's DMs, whether it's posting all this stuff, whether it's following people and getting nothing back. I believe that is killing the engagement on your account and Instagram will almost rank people based on engagement rates and DMs will be a part of this whole algorithm equation. It's not just going to be feed posts. You'd be, you'd be an idiot to think it's just feed posts based on the complexities of how Instagram works, right? It's going to be a combination of all those things and it's going to rank you based on that. It's my opinion. I don't know it for a fact. It's my opinion. It seems to play out in practice when I look at all my clients who are doing well, who aren't doing well based on engagement levels. It seems to play out that way. You know, the clients that tend to do the best are the ones that have not, it, it sounds silly, but they've not been in a mentorship that's told them to yep. um, do these things. I'm, I'm, I'm careful not to give these away because I want you to watch all of this. Yeah. Um, not for any reason because we don't get paid for it. But point two, um, we sh we should probably just do them all. We should probably just say all the points in ten seconds, save ourselves some time, and then well, just fuck yeah. off. Yeah, be easy, won't it? Um, so number two, uh, so Dan briefly touched on it is when he said that she was following seven thousand people. Is the go follows mass amounts of go follows in the hope that mm -hmm. people are going to be following you back? It's going to kill your account if you are going and following a hundred people a day and getting four people follow you back that are. Let's be honest pity follows back at, yep. at times. I know people that will just follow people back because, oh, I've been followed by someone. They follow, follow them back. doesn't mean that they're interested. Do we think that that's a good, uh, a good way to grow your Instagram account? Definitely not. And all you're going to do is you're going to end up following so many people, the ratio is going to be so far off in terms of what your engagement is for the amount of people that you're following. You're going to be seen as a spam account. So like Dan said there, the algorithm will 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 give each Instagram page a, a spam style score. That That's what happens, which will determine how far your reach goes with your, your reels or your posts. It will determine how far you come up somebody's um, story kind of reel, I guess, at the yeah. top, story storyboard at the top. It will um, influence how many people are actually watching or engaging with your things. Because we, we've seen accounts, right? I've got accounts with 250,000 followers getting nothing on, on their reels, getting no followers on their reels. I've seen accounts with 11,000 followers getting 100 story views. How can that be? 
I'm also convinced as well that if you follow 7,000 people and you're not interacting with that many people on your feed and on your page, which you can't because there's too many, right? Again, Instagram doesn't want that. So people have this thing with Instagram where like, it's a business, right? They want you to use it. If you're someone that follows 7,000 people and you don't go on there and you don't interact with other people's content, it's not a good look for you. Instagram aren't going to go, oh, this person's great. I love the fact that they never come on this pl on this platform. They never interact with anyone's posts and they post their stuff trying to get business. They're not, they're not going to favor you. They're not going to push your stuff, right? So part of the reason I don't like that is that you should be following a certain number of people that you can actually keep up with. You can actually take an interest in. You can actually like their stuff and actually spend time on Instagram on your feed, commenting on people's posts, liking people's posts, saving people's posts, using DMs for what they're supposed to be used for, using Instagram stories, reacting to other people's stories, looking at the behind the scenes. Instagram wants you to use it as it was designed to be used. Don't think that you can trick it into like, oh, I won't, I'm going to spend 30 minutes a day on Instagram and that's it, just doing my post and I'm going to fuck off. It knows what you're doing. It knows doing. what you're doing, right? It's not stupid. So that's one of the reasons well, the whole follow and follow back thing, I believe doesn't work because you don't create meaningful connections. There's no back and forth between the same accounts regularly over time. So Instagram just goes spam. That's how it's going to filter it out. Don't make Instagram's job easier when it comes to looking for spam accounts by doing that. Because it's really obvious when that happens. Number three, like paid shout outs, um, that kind of that kind of thing, that kind of approach of just trying to get followers for followers' sake, um, paying a, another account to, to give you a big shout out and to, to, to pull across their followers doesn't work. Um, you, you, you might get some follows across, wicked, but do they actually care? Are they actually bothered? Are they actually going to engage? No. And you're just going to end up with a lot of stagnant followers that don't engage with your account. And again, what's going to happen to that Instagram score? It's going to go down. You're not going to get the reach that you want. You're not going to get the engagement that you want. And it will ruin your account eventually if you do enough of them. Um, I've got one client who was told to do them in a previous mentorship and um, now he's having to start a new account. He's been a coach for years. He's having to start a new Facebook account. I think he's got like 6,000 followers getting no engagement, getting no reach because of these things. Mm -hmm. So he's having to start again. So be careful what you do. Again, we don't have the most amount of followers, but I tell you what, we've got enough to build a hell of a business out of it because that's what you want. We don't need to do paid stuff and paid shout outs and sell our souls to, to try to get 20,000 followers or 50,000 followers. Who cares? Because the followers that we do have, like what we do, get results with us when they come to work with us, build a relationship with us before they make the decision to come into coaching and they engage with our content. And that's it. Simple. Was that? And the fourth one is, oh, I don't know the fourth one. The fourth one. Well, I do know, I, hopefully I will know the fourth well, one. But until he's he, always until saying, he tells oh, me. Until he tells know. me. I don't um, know what's going on in his head. Yeah. Could be anything. So, should I, should, you tell them with my permission. Yeah, with my permission. I don't need your permission. You tell them with um, my permission. Permission granted. Um, so the fourth... Use as you wish. <laughs> the fourth one is um, desensitizing your audience with blunt posts and opening spaces and just five spaces every month that will kill your account the amount of people that i've had that are coming that, that come in and i'm like what have you done to get clients and they're like dms and and opening spaces every month first one works yep four or five people come in second one two or three people come in third one none fourth one none fifth one none sixth one none so what you've just done is you've just lowered the goodwill of your account because you're always asking. You've lowered the um, scarcity and urgency of spaces or that that um, feeling of really wanting to get space because our next month of spaces, apparently. Like, it hinders the CTAs that you can do in between that. So, like, we always talk about, there's another video on CTAs. I'll say there's a card there. There isn't. Um, nobody's going to do it. So, <laughs> we've got another video on CTAs. We say that you should be relatively, you know, pretty even with your CTAs and then um, throughout the month and then focus and condense them um, together to, to have a bit of an intenser uh, push, but you should still be having them on a week to week basis. But if you're not, if you have no spaces available until the start of every month, stops you doing CTAs on any of your posts because they can't DM you for coaching, can it? If you, if you only have five spaces available and now they've all gone. So it's going to, it's going to start to kill your account. I would only be opening spaces for one-to-one -one two to three times a year and what i would tie them into is a price increase because if you're doing all of the other things we tell you about in the members group getting there or with our one-to-one clients if you do all of that you should be building up your client base which should allow you to increase your prices on a year-to-year -year basis you probably should increase your price on a year-to-year -year basis not by anything astronomical but just 20 25 pounds a month 
it should go up. So you can tie that into an open spaces launch. And you could probably maybe once a year as well do like, a, I've, I've been an online coach for four years now to celebrate it. The next four people that come into coach, I'm going to give them a gift because you can legitimately say, I've got four gifts. You could do something like that. And maybe the third one, optional, might be off the back of a group coaching. If you're running a group coaching, you kind of go, you've seen the group launch, now the one-to-one spaces are open, back to normal. That that would be it, type thing. So if you're doing a, an, an open spaces every month, blunt post, whatever you want to call it, um, get ready for it to die, really die. Especially if you do the same Canva post over and over again. <laughs> when you do it as well opportunity for just five people uh, is, it, is it just five it's always five or three opportunity for just five yeah. people always but what five. people will take out of that is if we're taking the mick out of five or three they'll change it to four four or six you're missing yeah. the point you're missing yeah. the point of that. Just, don't, just don't do it so yeah, there you go like this video subscribe to the channel all that sort of good stuff share it with a mate you're not going to share it with a mate because then they're going to know the secrets as well but if you do like the secrets please do share us around we do like to be shared around oh, it's the most filthy. action we get um, so yeah make sure you do that join the members group just get in that group Drop us a message, or, follow us on Instagram, whatever you need to do. If you, We never even call to action this, is how bad we are. If you're in the members group and you want some advice or some extra support, we've got the Members Plus. First time you've probably heard of it. It's been going for ages. We just don't <laughs> speak about just it. We've got about. the Members Plus, where members you can work plus. with one of our coaches um, to hold we, you accountable. Because we are full with the waiting list, so... Yeah. That's why, yeah. You can work with us, but you've got to put your name on the waiting list. Um, so if you want that, do that go over to us Instagram. But if you want some accountability, again, non-contract, no minimum term, anything like that, we've got a couple of coaches there that will guide you through the video, exact videos that you need. They'll hold you accountable. We're tracking the data. They will give you check-ins and one-to-one, and, check-ins. And one-to-one updates, Zoom just like calls. we do. Zoom calls, the lot. Really easy. Members Plus. Um, where do they go for that? Can't get anywhere. <laughs> Message us because don't know where to put it. It's in it. the members group, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the members group. If you join the members group, once if you join the members group, then join members plus, you get your hundred pound back because it's part of that. So it's fine. So if you're funded. already in the members group, look on the left hand side. There's a there's an option that says members plus. Yeah. There's a paywall in it. Yeah. There's a paywall. You click it. You, you can pay yeah. there. Sweet. Get involved. Yeah. Come do that. Sweet. There we go. See how we don't even know. We probably should know. <laughs> we are. We're. Don't need to sell. See so you in a bit. Fine.